Back with another electric van test from Peugeot and this one is aimed at the city van market. It's really for doing those round town trips, going around the city all day. Being able to charge up overnight is fantastic. We're going to do a little bit more than that. We've got a bit ambitious and we're going to take it on some longer runs. Dylan's going to do the driving on this one because I did it on the last one and I've probably said most of what I wanted to say about electric vehicles. This is the 100% electric Peugeot ePartner long wheelbase model with a 50 kilowatt battery capable of 171 miles. And like the eXpert we tested last year, it's a joy to drive, especially in the city. There are fewer restrictions for EV drivers and plenty of charging points. Now things get slightly trickier when you leave the city because although things have improved since last year, there still aren't a huge number of rapid charges. So if you want to get rid of that range anxiety, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your home charges sorted later in the video. So we've got 100 miles exactly in the tank. Well, I say tank, it's not a tank. What I don't like about the mileage indicator, it's on the optimistic side. I'd rather, it was the opposite of that. The acceleration is really impressive. You don't expect performance from your van. This has three drive modes. You have the eco mode, but then you have normal, and then you have power. Put your foot down on power, you get an amazing boost of speed now. When you change between those three modes, for example, it's saying I've got 90 miles left. If I change that down to normal, it changes to 96. And then if I take it down to eco, I've got 101 miles. Out of service is a bit of a problem because this is the only decent charger anywhere near me. Oh well, let's try another one. Now this looks like a good situation. Five chargers, but the thing is only Three of them are the rapid chargers, and each one of those three rapid chargers has two different connectors. That one doesn't fit the vehicle I've got. Two tethers, but only one of them works for me. To make matters worse, those two over there aren't working, which means there's only one. So it's just pure luck that this one wasn't occupied. This is actually not a bad place to stop this industrial park, there's charging places. I'm going to go to Trade Point and then head over to Greg's for some lunch. Should give me a 20 minutes charge I need. This is my lucky day, I just got a free sandwich from Greg's because their card machine wasn't working, it was on the house. What a great day. Now I've just come back from getting the sandwich and I've noticed that the kilowatts has now gone down to 19. I think that's because I'm nearly full bottom bit, the top bit. When it comes to working out the cost of charging the vehicle, there are a lot of variables, but let's just look at a rough cost. On a 100 mile journey, if you're using a 50 kilowatt rapid charger, you're going to be looking at just over eight pounds. If you're using a seven kilowatt public charger, you're going to be looking at just over 11 pounds for that same journey. Compare that to the diesel Peugeot partner, that would cost almost 16 pounds. So when you're on the 50 kilowatt charger, you're looking at roughly half the price. Okay, so the battery's at 90%, so I can forget about charging now. Head over to the merchants and pick up a load of heavy slabs, see how it performs, go over and see how Abe and Sam are doing. I just want to see one of those tiles ever again. Abe, the skill builder editor, is actually doing some proper hard work this week. Yeah. And I'm going to leave you to it now. I'm going to go back to the nice air-conditioned studio to do some work, all right? Are you saying I don't do hard work normally? <laughs> This particular model doesn't have Peugeot's connected 3D navigation system, but it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that means while I'm charging my phone up, I've got Google Maps as my sat nav and I'm connected to Spotify, so it's all good. <laughs> 
So now it's time to get the home charging sorted out and I've used a company called Smart Home Charge to take care of the installation because they make the whole process as simple as it can be. Now if you send them your info along with pictures of your meter and where you want your charger to go, they're going to get back to you with a quote. Now I paid a total of £834 but that was before I realised you can actually get an EV charge point grant. So it would have ended up costing a couple of hundred quid if I'd gone for that grant. Now I went for the Wallbox Pulsar Plus because it's nice and compact. It's got a five meter tether. Not everybody wants a tether because it could be that you're charging different types of vehicles with different types of connections. This model also works with the Intelligent Octopus EV tariff and the installation took around two hours to get everything set up including a quick test charge before the engineer left. Right we have our, our own separate metal enclosure here with a C-Type 40 double pole trip switch which is protecting the EV charger. It's on its own 10mm separate tails so it's separate from the house. If it ever did come under full conditions it would trip this switch and leave your house alone. Uh, this is the SWA leaving the property to the charger. It's been sealed. We recommend it gets tested every five years. We've also Smart Home Charge provide if you scan this, a support page, if you do have any issues, scan this and it'll talk you through what you could do and where to go next. So pulsing blue on the wall box means that it's charging. Flashing green over here means that it's receiving the charge. I've just had a message from the app, the Wallbox Pulsar app saying, you're all good to go, the charging is complete. And uh, it's saying, I've got another hour and a half to go. The communication between the van and the, the wall box isn't quite what it should be. Obviously it's software updatable, the wall box. Once it was all set up, it said, do you want to do a software update? So I did that. So this is a fairly new... So I'm hoping that that's something that can be updated. If you've got an Apple Watch, it's really handy that the message did appear on my watch to say, your van is good to go. So, oh, it's a dog. <laughs> okay, so the destination is 81 miles away and I have a 157 mile range. I've got a fairly light load in the back, so let's see how much we get out of it. I've arrived at my destination. I have traveled 80 miles, but I've used 100 miles of the range that I had at the start. I've used a bit more because I've been on the motorway, overtaking, I've been going into the power mode quite a bit. So that, that's okay. I'm not unhappy with that. If I had been driving at, say, 60 miles an hour, it would have been around about this range here, it would have been much closer to the predicted range. Okay, Roger finally gets to go. <laughs> We've arrived in Rygate and he doesn't know how to start the start the van. Right, job, so that's your handbrake, that button. You just got to push that yeah. forward. Oh, what? Like that? Yep, so give it a firm push up and then R will illuminate. Reverse. Gently. It's a square steering wheel, or it's got lamps on it. Power mode to me seems quite unnecessary. It's only to kind of demonstrate how quick it is. And this is quick, right? So hang on a second. Let's just go into power mode. Put your foot down. That's quite nippy, isn't it? Very nippy. What's that over there? Uh, what is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, that's electric vehicles only. I don't know. That thing there says that we've got to have a permit. So I think we've got to get in there quickly and ask for forgiveness rather than permission, yeah? Why would they stop us? We're connected. Now, ask asked us to enter the ID, which I thought would have been a serial number, but it isn't a serial number. So I had to phone tech support. They have started the charge remotely and Roger is beginning to lose patience. And I'm a very patient guy, but yeah. you know, my life is ticking by. So that charger was way, way too slow. It was only running at seven kilowatts. So we had to go and look for something better. So this is the dream situation, Rog. Not only is it empty yeah. and ready to go. Come yeah. and have a look. Yeah, yeah. It's the big fat one. It is, it's the ultra. It's the supercharger. It's up here, 150 kilowatts. Oh, 150. Never leave home without it. 
can already see that we've got 42% in there. Now this beast of a charger is charging at 310 miles an hour. Fastest one I've seen. I reckon it's gonna be done in 20 minutes. Did you say we're gonna get a bacon sandwich? Uh, vegetarian options are available. <laughs> we're in Red Hill now and I feel like I wanna recommend Pop-In Cafe. Very nice, even the wasps like it. There's none of the wasps gone. I was, I was going a wasps recommendation. So this is what you want to see as an EV driver, 95%. And what you'll find is once you get to 80%, all of these chargers, they tend to slow down because 80% is the sweet spot. If you don't need more than that, you shouldn't put it in. I was talking to an expert. He said, imagine you've got a drawer and you want to fill it with frogs. When you've got it 80% full of frogs, it's very hard to get the remaining frogs in there. <laughs> So you select that car and then press the middle button to end. So we've put a few tools and a few slabs and stuff in the back, but now we want to do a bigger test with Mr. Ham here. So fire her up and let's see if she can handle the muck truck. Oh, that's fine. run out with the muck truck. The performance doesn't feel any different. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel sluggish. So once we put that extra weight in the back of the van with the muck truck, the range had dropped roughly by about 10%. And now to top my day off, I've lost the GoPro camera that I borrowed from my dad. So I'm gonna have to get my dad a new GoPro camera because I got a nice little suction cup. So all of those exterior shots you can see, and the cup seemed to be working really well. I was grabbing hold of the camera to see if I could pull it off the car. So then I stuck it on the side of the car and it's disappeared. I don't think I'm ever going to see it again. Now, rather than look at the total cost of the van, it's more useful to look at the cost of ownership over a 48 month period. So there are lots of benefits that you're gonna get. The low emission zones that you see in London, the ones that are gonna be coming to other cities, you're gonna avoid those fees. You can get a UK government plug-in van grant up to two and a half thousand pounds. The charging costs are lower than the equivalent in diesel. So when you take all of these things into consideration over that 48 month period, the electric vehicle will work out roughly five thousand pounds cheaper than the equivalent diesel model so here's mr ham driving an ev for the you first need to time press the brake pedal you got to press the brake pedal and this is a city van but we're about to take it into the bushes now very slowly release your foot from the brake going into the jungle and uh now you push it to the reverse but you push it hard because if you... As in B is reverse. No. Wow. How is B reverse? Oh, right. That's reverse. <laughs> so push it up into reverse. Oh, I can see there's an R there. Yeah. Yeah. But if you tap it lightly, it goes into neutral. So now you're in reverse. Okay. It's a weird sensation, isn't it? Yeah, this here. Because I'm just expecting, like, revving noises. Where even are we? Oh, I'll tell you what, you had about an inch to spare there. <laughs> Put it towards you. And that's the handbrake on. So what do you think about that, about the electric vehicle? It's a weird experience. Mm. I mean, obviously, they'll all be electric by the time you grow up, won't they? It's how I grow up. <laughs> There's so much to like about this Peugeot e-partner. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's easy to drive, especially if you're used to a manual diesel van. Now, if I was buying this van for myself, I'd have to go for the surround rear vision cameras. I'm just so used to having those rear view cameras now. And I'd go for the safety pack, which are both optional extras. The biggest problem is actually nothing to do with the van itself. It's the UK and the charging infrastructure. Yeah, it's getting better. I found chargers in places where I wasn't expecting to see them. And I never actually got close to running out of charge but I'd just like to know that if I'm going to stop at say Peterborough services that there's going to be a rapid charger ready for me. Check out the link in the description to the Skill Builder website where you can find out more about the Peugeot ePartner.